Okay, um, I'm trying something new here. So bear with me, I'm trying to figure out how to do this, but I thought I would give you guys a little peek into my work area and kind of show you what I'm surrounded by inspiration-wise on a daily basis and what I'm working on right now and sort of kind of like troubleshooting my current project and kind of show you guys what's involved in you know things that happen during a creative project that you don't expect and then what do you do how do you fix those problems so this is the painting right behind me is an old painting i did a while ago and i kind of somebody said to me recently oh it's not finished because it has the pencil lines on it still but i don't know i kind of like it and yes those are fishing poles because that's we just have fishing poles and outdoor equipment all over our houses. That's just kind of how we roll. So switch this. How do I switch it? Well, all right, sorry about that. So this is kind of where I do my artwork in this kind of back corner of this room. This is a canvas that I'm working on alongside my mushroom painting. I started this um, when I was um, taking my summer painting class at the college. Um, I signed up for the summer painting class because it's a little bit easier to work on projects and get things done there because when I'm there I don't have to do laundry or straighten things up or run to the grocery store or anything like that. I can just work. So that's kind of a nice um, thing. This, These are my closet doors. I'm one of those people that scotch tapes pictures to the wall because Obviously, I want to go to the beach, and um, there's a um, self-portrait that my son did when he was in fourth grade, and that was actually kind of what started me on this art journey was I was the art masterpiece volunteer for his class at the time, and it kind of got me started on sort of thinking that I could look into being an art teacher. This is a vision board that I did. Um, you know what, I should just do a separate video on this because there is a whole huge story behind this and I actually want to do a lesson on um, collage vision boards and how to do them and different prompts and things like that. But it's a total game changer for setting goals and visualizing what you want for your future. So yeah, I definitely need to do a separate video or lesson or class or something on that. That's a lot, a lot of fun. And it's something you can do with your friends too. And then this is kind of like my sort of idea board. This is things that I'm currently working on, things that I want to work on, reference materials. Um, I can probably do a whole other video on that too because there's so much there. There's tons of stories right there. That painting of the orange on the left was done by my cousin, Lisa Solgit. She's an artist in Denver, Colorado, and does amazing, amazing oil studies in, um, I would say, an impressionistic style, but um, just very beautiful, lovely um, work that she does. I would definitely look her up if you're in the Denver area. And here's my current painting that I'm working on. It is based off a drawing that I did for my coloring book project, which evolved into what it is now, which is this painting series. But this painting has been a lot of fun to work on. I collaged the paper background. Um, I took pages out of the Alice in Wonderland book and um, cut them to fit this isometric grid. So some of them are highlighted, some of them um, are a little bit harder to read, and um, some passages I really wanted people to sort of like lean in and take a closer look at, but then I also wanted to, when you're standing further away from it, I wanted you to have sort of the idea that it's almost like a kaleidoscope or fragmented glass, sort of like the going through the looking glass type of idea. 
But anyways, the ring around this paper background is going to be done in gold leaf. And then when, so when I finished all my painting and collaging and everything like that, and I was looking a little bit closer at the border, I realized that I had some areas that had a little tiny gap in between the paper and the border. I don't know, I hope you can see that right, right there. So there's a little gap there. And I see, I want the gold leaf to go right here. So that gap will really, really bother me. And it's in just a few areas. So what I'm working on today is I'm going to be jumping back into my books and slicing up little pieces of paper to fill in those gaps so that I can then um, do the gold leaf around the border. Zoom in, and it's kind of it's kind of cool. It's one of those pieces that you, from a distance, it, you know, you think it's one thing, and then when you get when you look cl at it close up, you see all these other things that you didn't realize were there. Um, and then I need to go over this area also because um, I was covering up something that was there before. And I kind of like this. There's a little bit of a mystery there. Um, when, you, when you see the texture close up, you're like, oh, what is that? Um, but actually, it, it was a painting that I had started on this canvas and then decided to completely change it. So if you look, Closer, you can see where I had painted some words, um, and you can see the text underneath the current painting. So to me, I think that's kind of cool, because it's not something that you're going to see in a photograph. It's only something you're going to be able to see if you're looking at the painting itself right in front of you and, and you kind of walk around it and take different views of it and things like that. So that's what I'm working on today. I kind of wanted to talk about something that I've been listening to on this podcast. Let's see if I can pull it up. If you've been following me for a while, you may have heard me talk about creative pep talk before. Um, the host of the podcast, his name is Andy J. Pizza. He goes by Andy J. Pizza. His real name is Andy Miller. But uh, pep talk is a perfect name for it because he really does give you a little bit of a pep talk. He kind of walks you through different things, methodologies to sort of get through some of the struggles that you're dealing with, with your projects. His goal is to help you create a creative career. So, and that's really, really cool. I, I love people who encourage others, especially, you know, fellow artists. You know, it's really not a competition. It should be, we should be kind of working as a team. And that's why I love his whole idea of a pep talk. So one of the things that he talks about in this episode is... Actually, it's this episode and the next episode, so 238 and 239. Why, you know, everybody has this, creative people have this desire to create things and to make it big and, you know, make money off of whatever their art is, whether you're a visual artist, an illustrator, a graphic designer, um, a songwriter, musician, dancer, playwright, novelist, whatever your art form is, if you're a creative person, you know, we all have these goals and dreams. A lot of the times I think people get sidetracked by, oh, I need to do this, I need to be this, I need to be this next big thing, I need to, you know, they just have this idea in their head that they just want to be this big blow up superstar in whatever their field is. And there's nothing wrong with that, but they lose sight of why they wanted to do it in the first place. Why you're doing what you're doing is the thing that matters. So having that goal in mind, having that idea in the back of your mind of why you're doing it is going to help all of the other goals 
fall into place. So if you just want to make art because you want to be famous, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You could be famous because you're an artist. You could be famous because you did something stupid on YouTube. I mean, that has absolutely nothing to do with what you're doing. The fame is just the end result of something that you did. But if you want to make an impact, if you want to connect with people, if you want to reach other people, other artists, other people who, even people who aren't artists, but who have a desire to be creative. That personally, that's my why. Why I want to do this, like why, like why is Heidi making all these videos? Who cares? You know, like, okay, Heidi's painting in her room. Great, that's awesome, good for Heidi. But why is she doing this? So my drive that I've just kind of figured out, I personally believe that everyone has the ability to be creative, whatever that means. I meet so many people who, who tell me things like, oh, I couldn't even draw a stick figure, or I can only draw stick figures, or I couldn't do that if my life depended on it, I'm not a creative person, blah, blah, blah. But then you talk to them, and later on they'll say something like, well, when I was a kid, I really used to love to color, or I really used to love art class when I was in elementary school. I had so much fun making things. But then somewhere along the line, there comes a disconnect where this person does not associate themselves with being creative or being an artist. And it usually happens because a teacher, unfortunately, but a lot of the times it's a teacher or a peer, like another student, will give this person the idea that they're not good at it. Maybe they should just direct their energy somewhere else. And to me, that's so, so sad because not everyone is going to have the drive or the talent or the ability to reach certain levels, right? Like not every athlete is going to be a Michael Jordan or um, a Larry Fitzgerald or I'm not a sports person, so I don't really know a lot of sports people, but not, a, not every athlete is going to reach these high pinnacles of athletic success, right? But that doesn't mean you can't go out in your backyard and throw a football around and have fun doing it. I feel the same way about creativity and art. And I feel that if I can sh sort of show some of my process to other people, explain how I did things, what I do when I run into problems or things that are unexpected, because you always do, then maybe sometime, somewhere along the line, somebody who's watching a video or following any of my work online might say to themselves, I'd like to try that, or I'd like to try something like that, or I'd like to maybe just even dip my toe into that. I mean, not everybody's gonna be able to paint an entire canvas. And there's artwork out there being done by other people that, I mean, I'm in awe of, and I look at it and I go, I can't even imagine being able to do that. But everybody's on their own path. Everybody's on their own journey. And to me, I think creativity, and actually the result of creativity, self-expression, is even more important to anyone and everyone. I mean, there's people who have debilitating disabilities who paint or draw or take pictures or make music. And it's such a healing, wonderful part of life to be able to express yourself and your 
your interpretation of the way you see the world or the way you feel things or the way you react to certain things. But to me, I just think my why, if you're wondering like, why is Heidi doing all of this? Why should we care? I'm doing it because I want you to see the inner creative person inside yourself. I want you to pick up a box of crayons at, you know, at Target right now. They're on sale for 50 cents because it's back to school time. Pick up a box of crayons and grab a 99 cent coloring book and just play. Just have fun. Nobody ever said you had to be Monet or Picasso or make these huge masterpieces. Art can just be fun, and if I can be any part at all in anybody realizing that being creative and expressing yourself through creativity and art is so healing and so soothing and therapeutic, not only for the person, but the, for the people that you're sharing it with, for the people that you're talking with it about. Go to an art museum, look at paintings close up. I mean, you'll, you'll see a photograph of a famous painting a hundred times in your life, and you'll go see it in a museum, and it makes you cry because it's just, you can feel it. You can see the brush strokes on the canvas. It's, it's so like right there in front of you. You can, you can see what the artist was seeing when they were making it. It's almost like being able to follow um, Martin Scorsese around and have him point out to you the things that he was doing when he made a film or, you know, sitting down with, you know, Bruce Springsteen or Sting or something and have them playing a few chords for you and explaining, you know, why they did what they did or what inspired them or what they were thinking about the day that they wrote a song. It's just, it's so moving and it's part of our human experience. And to me, art is what makes us human. No other creature on the planet makes art as a form of self-expression. Yes, you can put a paintbrush in an elephant's trunk and the elephant can paint something. And I don't know, elephants are pretty smart. He might be the exception to the rule, but it really is. It's what makes us human. It what, it's what makes us connect to one another. It's how we tell stories. I don't know, sorry I kind of went off on this and I'm starting to get emotional, but I just really hope that you find something of value in Anything that you see from me, whether it's just my Instagram post or some of these videos, and if there's something that you're wondering about, if there's questions that you have, like, how did you do this? Or how did so-and-so do this? Or why is this famous painting so famous? What's the big deal? I mean, I would love to help you understand these types of things. And I want, I want you to ignite that spark of curiosity and creativity that is inside you. Everyone, when they are a child, is a creative person. Small children, to get a room full of small children and give them paper and crayons and not one of them is going to be like, I can't do this. But they don't care. They're just going to have fun. They're going to draw pictures. They're going to scribble something and they're going to say, this is a hippopotamus and a giraffe and they're playing soccer and having macaroni and cheese and you're going to be like, oh, that's awesome. Kids don't care. You were like that when you were a kid and something along the way happened to crap you out about it and I'm here to tell you, you're a creative person, you can make art, you can do it. And if I can help you, that's what I'm here for.